The wonders of the universe have captivated astronomers for centuries. The billions of galaxies, stars, and planets have much to say about our own planet. For Jennifer Wiseman, it was this fascination that propelled her into the field of astrophysics. I began to get more and more curious about space because those were the years when we were starting to send the first probes to other planets and their moons, getting the first pictures back, and I found that fascinating and I was drawn more and more to that field of curiosity. It was on a field trip during her undergraduate studies that Jennifer made a remarkable discovery. I got to uh, study these photographs of the sky where the astronomer had taken a picture and then taken another picture of the same place in the sky a few hours later, and I learned how to compare these two pictures very carefully. I was able to unexpectedly detect a newly discovered comet on that photographic plate. It had not been seen before, and then we went back and confirmed it, and I studied that for my senior thesis. Now a distinguished astronomer, Jennifer's scientific research concerns the formation of stars. It takes many millions of years, but stars will coalesce out of dense clumps of gas in these interstellar clouds that fill the galaxy. And then once you get a dense enough clump of gas, it will uh, turn on, basically. The pressure in the middle of this core that's collapsed due to gravity will cause the hydrogen to fuse into helium, and that releases light. That's what our sun is doing. It's just sitting there as a ball of gas, but this fusion process is going on. So it's a dynamic process, and I study those early stages when stars, baby stars, protostars, we call them, are forming out of these interstellar clouds. How are you? Pretty good, actually getting a little bit of science research done today. Terrific. I love being connected with other scientists who are also very curious about the whole history of the universe, perhaps the future of the universe, uh, how we got here as a planet, and uh, why life is thriving here on this planet and not so much on other planets in our solar system, it seems like. What's special about Earth and are there other Earth-like planets out there? I think these are wonderful questions to ask. I think this kind of knowledge is incredibly important for us to have a sense of who we are as human beings. And it also informs our, our understanding of the philosophy of the meaning of life and our faith and all kinds of things that fit into what it means to be human. Here, of the James Webb Space Telescope, which we're building to be the successor to Hubble. Pioneering research in astronomy isn't the only legacy that Jennifer is leaving. Jennifer is a, a great astronomer and she's really a leader in the field and so she's um, in a sense an inspiration to me um, as I've started to get, get started in my career in astronomy. She's an example to me now even as she's, her career has taken off that um, you can be a graceful person and still continue a path of professional growth even as she's gotten a lot of recognition for the work that she's done. She continues to be somebody who is just a down-to-earth person and very humble. Well, we do in indeed want to look at, at these stars again and one of the... I just try to be the kind of friend that everyone needs at that moment of their life. We're all at a different place and we're all having uh, different questions, but we all want to have meaning. We all want to know what's true as well. And so in that sense, I try to be a partner to people wherever they are. Jennifer's research for meaning in life came quite naturally while growing up in a Christian home. At some point growing up, I realized or I understood that faith in God needs to be a personal affair. One needs to actually commence on a personal relationship with God and, and, and really decide that that's how you want to follow Him your whole life. And so I think there was a point in my childhood when I actually asked Christ to be the Lord of my life, um, and I'm grateful for that. But really, my faith journey has been a lifelong one before and after that of trying to understand how to follow Him in different situations as my life changes. It was as an undergraduate at MIT that Jennifer met her husband, Mark. 
we were both working in the same laboratory where we were studying how astronauts adapt to being weightless and how their perceptions change. And it was years later before, when we kind of stayed in touch as friends that we became interested in each other as more than friends. And then we were married after we were both finished with our degrees. While they both maintain busy schedules, their mutual love and respect has sustained them through 16 years of married life. Well, we very much love each other, and we understand the professional pressures on each other's life. So if he says, you know, I have a conference this weekend, I've got to go, I totally understand that. Or if I say, I have to work till midnight tonight because this proposal is due tomorrow, he totally understands that. But in astronomy right now, we live in a very exciting time because we're discovering... Through her various speaking engagements, Jennifer shares both her scientific perspective on the wonders of the universe, along with thoughts of how it impacts her faith. So when I see the huge expanse of the universe, the, the incredible number of galaxies, the incredible changes that have happened in galaxies over the cosmic history and time, and just the complexity of the biological world, all these things tell me something about God's nature as I interpret it, that God is powerful and majestic, but loves beauty and creativity, patient over eons of time, and loving life. So uh, this familiar psalm sings out what those of us who enjoy looking at the night sky realize every time we look that the heavens declare the glory of God. Jennifer hopes to see more dialogue within churches about understanding the role of science. I think it's important for churches not to be afraid of leaving questions a little bit open. And I think part of the problem with talking about science sometimes is there's difficult questions. Maybe bring in people who are doing the science to, to, to tell us about what we're discovering, everything from genetics to uh, new discoveries in outer space, and maybe don't have to answer all the questions, but leave the floor open for people to come with their own questions and to talk about it. That makes a vibrant church. I think the church ought to be on the forefront of excitement about scientific discovery for several reasons. One is that there's a, a good phrase that says, all truth is God's truth. The whole world right now is very connected to science. Everything we do, even if we're not thinking about it, is somewhat related to science and technology. All of our health, medicine, uh, even our entertainment, uh, certainly uh, our food, our agriculture, even things churches do to serve the poor in developing countries. We need to understand these things to be better equipped to serve better equipped to worship God, and I think better blessed. We learn more how to praise God when we understand His wonderful works.